Back by popular demand, today we're going to be doing another Minecraft coding tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit different though. We're not going to be doing a dream coding tutorial. We're going to be looking at Wisp slash Tapel plugins. They've gotten really popular from doing Minecraft butt challenges in the last couple of months. So I thought maybe some people would like to know how they make their plugins. And to be honest, they're actually not that hard. But if this is your first time watching one of these tutorials and you have no idea what you're seeing on screen, be sure to check out the first three episodes of this series in the card linked right now. And you'll be all caught up and you can come right back here and start coding. And before we get started, make sure you subscribe, let me know what plugins you wanna see me code next time, and leave a like on the video if it helps you out. Anyways, let's get coding. So today we're going to be doing one of their most popular kind of series or mini series within the Minecraft butt genre. Uh, they do a lot of things where basically whenever something happens, OP items drop. So we're going to be coding one of those today. So I've already set up the project. We have damage drops. That's what I just called it. We have our source folder with our named package, our listeners package, a listener Java class and then our main Java class within our named package. And then all the way down at the bottom, we have our plugin.yml. So these are the three classes that we need to actually code in. Not too bad. And let's hop over to our plugin.yml right now. So we're in our plugin.yml, pretty simple, straightforward plugin.yml. We have our name, the version, I put API version just because sometimes some things don't work as they are intended unless you have this. So I'm just using API version 1.16. Author, put your name, main. This is as always the most important part of the plugin.yml. You wanna make sure that this is typed in properly, correct capitalization to get to your main Java class. As you can see, we are in our me.jack.dd package and then dot main and then a description i just have this as a plugin by blackjack just because i'm using this as kind of a template and that is it for the plugin.yml so now we can go to our main java class again pretty straightforward we have our main java class extends java plugin and as usual we have at override public void on enable and new temp listen this and this is going to be our listener class, which we are going to code right now. This is the basic layout of our listener. Uh, I've already have some stuff imported, so don't take any mind to those, but we have private main plugin, then the constructor public temp listen main plugin, this dot plugin equals plugin, and then bug it dot get plugin manager dot register events this plugin, and then we go down to our actual event handler. So we do at event handler, public void. You can name it whatever you want. That does not matter at all. I just have temp event. And then for this particular plugin, we're gonna be using entity damage event. We're gonna be running events every time somebody takes damage. And I have that event just called E. And this is actually pretty simple. We just do entity B equals E dot get entity. And then we have an if statement, if b.getType.equals entity type dot player. So this is our if statement. So it's gonna check our entity, get its type, and make sure that it's equal to a player. So it's only gonna do this, whatever's in this if statement, if our entity that gets damaged is a player. So if a creeper gets damaged, it will not do anything in here. But if I take damage, it will run what's ever in here. So now I'm just gonna leave a comment for now. We're gonna have our OP item algorithm run to pick an item for us to drop. And then we are going to do b.getWorld.drop item. And the location that we're gonna drop is at the player. So b.getLocation. And then we want to drop a certain item stack, which will be our item. And for now, we're just going to call that IS for item stack. And then put semicolon after that. And we are almost ready to go. So this is the basic layout of this plugin. We have it running every time an entity takes damage. We check if that entity is a player. If it is, then we run our OP item algorithm to pick out an item for us to drop. And then we drop that item at the player's location. So now onto the actual, 
I guess, challenging part of this plugin is writing this OP item algorithm. I wrote this one really quickly. It's probably not the best way to write it. It's also probably not the shortest way to write it, uh, but I will include it as a paste bin so you can just paste it into your code if you want and you'll just end up pasting it right here. But let me just put OP algo end just so we know where it starts and where it ends. All right, so I just pasted that in. You can see we have our start here and we can scroll all the way down to the bottom to the end where we had our end before. So let's just take a look. As you can see, it's pretty long, but we create an instance of a Java random so we can basically just get a bunch of random numbers whenever we need them. And then we have a integer where we store those random numbers. So the first random number that we want is 14. And that is just really arbitrary based on how I have it set up. And we'll go through that a little bit later. And then we have our item stack, which we start out as null. So this first random integer, we select a number between zero and 13. So it's gonna be one less than whatever number you put in there. And with that number, we check if that number is zero. If it is zero, then we get a helmet. If it's one, we get a chest plate and then kind of so on and so on throughout all the armor, weapons and tools until we get down to golden apples. And so I just basically gave each item an equal probability of getting chosen. And then let's say we get zero on this first random integer test. Then we run the random integer test again over zero to two. And then we basically use that number to choose what kind of material. So if we have zero on this next roll, we get an iron helmet, one, we get a diamond helmet, and then two, we get a netherite helmet. And it kind of goes that same way for all of these. And then after we choose what material of armor or tool we have, then we keep going down, we select another random integer, and we select what enchantment we have. So we're just using a lot of random numbers and if statements to choose what item we get, what material of item, and then what possible enchantments we get. You can look through this on your own if you want. You can make changes to it. You can make better versions of it. I just put this together really quickly. Uh, like I said, it's probably not the best setup, but it gets the job done. And to be honest, that is it. You can export this and run it and it should run. So that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said at the beginning, make sure to subscribe for more of these and let me know what plugins you want to see done in the future and leave a like on the video and I'll see you in the next one. There's really only one way to start out this video. And there we go, <laughs> 10 iron. That's a good start. Should I just keep jumping? I mean, why not? Let's see what happens. There we go, another right chest plate on our first drop. A god apple, that's pretty good. Okay, so after only jumping four times, we have a shield, a netherite chest plate, iron, and a god apple. So not bad, uh, we're like a minute into the game and we already are pretty much loaded out. We just need some tools.